And welcome once again to EW10's Bookmark. I'm Doug Keck, your host. Our guest author is Lori Manhart, PhD, who along with Bishop Jan Leeson has put together the Come and See Bible Study Series published by Emmaus Road Press. Welcome to Thank you, EWTN's Doug. Bookmark. Uh, you're like the better half uh, of this team <laughs> in a sense because we did have the proud honor of having the bishop on here in the past. Uh, within the last year or so, he was actually on uh, Bookmark talking about uh, this whole series. And I have a question for you. You're living in Vero Beach, Florida. You're originally, I guess, from Michigan, at least at one point in your life. And he's from the Netherlands. How did you two hook up? Well, we actually have five biblical scholars who are authors of our series. And they're the primary authors, and then I help. And so we have now uh, 11 books. This is the 11th book in our series on the Gospel of Mark. The first author, author was Father Joseph Panessa mm -hmm. in Montana, who finished a doctorate at the Biblicum in Rome. And we also had um, Monsignor Jan Meiernick, who finished a doctorate at the Franciscan School of Biblical Studies in Jerusalem. He did the synoptics. And Father Andreas Hock did Revelation for us. And Monsignor Kosanke did Isaiah. And Bishop Leeson, I said, who will write, who knows anything about Sirach? Yeah. And they said, well, he did his dissertation at the Biblicum on Sirach. So I said, will you write Sirach for us? He said, let's do all the wisdom literature of the Bible. So we did all the wisdom literature of the Bible. I met him in, in the Netherlands. I went there to meet him. And then this year, I, we were planning to write a book. And he said, everywhere I go, I bring my Bible. And I'm always talking about Mark. He said, now you already covered Mark in the synoptics. Would you do a separate study on the Gospel of Mark? And that's the new one. And right? that's the new one. And Emmaus Road said, if he'll write it, we'll publish it. So that's what we did. Now he's the Bishop of Breda? Yes, that's correct. And that's in the Netherlands. And that's in the Netherlands. And his English is better than mine. And with each of <laughs> I our. Think it's better than mine, too. <laughs> I know. With each of our adult books, we also have a video series, a set okay. of DVD lectures. And so he did um, those DVD lectures are on the that go along with the, the Book of Wisdom, right. and people love them. One, one parish in New Jersey, they watch them twice every week. I know we're looking at uh, John Elson, who you've been working with right. on our acquisitions department, I know has been talking to you about possibly airing some of his videos, right? Right, exactly. The Gospel of Mark videos he did this year at the University of St. Thomas in St. Paul, Minnesota. We did a joint school of Catholic Bible study with Renewal Ministries, mm -hmm. And now that's also with people core think ministries. of Ralph Martin with yes, that, Yes, right? Ralph with, with Martin, the choices and Peter we Herbeck. Face, Peter Herbeck, Deb right. Herbeck. So we did this Bible study school, and he did five hours of lectures on the Gospel of Mark. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Doug, I've been doing Bible study for 25 years, and I heard things I have never mm -hmm. heard before in my life. I you mean, mean it was insights? Just and in, insights, and he looks at the Scriptures and uses the Scriptures to comment on the Scriptures in a way that nobody else does. Mm -hmm. Which is, so for example, he started the Gospel of Mark, he finished three chapters, and he got busy in his very busy diocese. So I said, well, I'll finish it. And he said, great. And I sent it to him, and he would review it. And one chapter, I think he left six sentences of my six pages. Oh, really? <laughs> and I was so embarrassed. And I said, look, if you want to start from scratch, it's okay. But I studied <laughs> 10 commentaries. And he said, well, I've read all those commentaries too, but the Lord has shown him a special way to interpret the scriptures mm -hmm. based on the scriptures, which is so beautiful. Mm -hmm. So you get a great product as a right, result. Right, and we've had a little sense of that from when he was here and, uh, and right. he was on our live show. And exactly. We've, we've spoken with him. We've got a very good reaction. He's got a great way of, of expressing sure. the faith, as you indicate. One of the things that struck me here, as I again, I mentioned, kind of you came out of the charismatic renewal, right? Right. Okay, right. connection Ralph Martin and those sure. people, Ann Arbor, Michigan, you got involved a long time ago. Uh, with a Bible study or with uh, the scripture. How did you get into, which came first, your involvement in the charismatic renewal or your interest in the Bible and scripture? The, in, first, I, I came into the charismatic renewal and God transformed my life as he did to so many other people. And I was working on a PhD and I just said, well, I should read the Bible. I've ever read everything else. And it was a very flippant comment and I couldn't get through it. I'd start at Exodus, get as far as Leviticus, get stuck. I just could not do it. I was prayed with for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. The scriptures came alive. Mm -hmm. I was invited to an interfaith Bible study. And in these interfaith Bible studies, the largest denominational group is Catholic. Mm -hmm. And 
the second largest group are fallen away and non-practicing Catholics. Mm -hmm. So I said, this is an area for evangelism. This is an area in which, and so we started Bible study, and this particular series is something that any lay person could use in their home, in their parish, just get some people mm -hmm. together and say, let's look at God's Word. Well, let me ask you, because you, you, you mentioned that inter you know, denominational Bible right. study, which we've kind of heard about in the past. This specifically says it's a Catholic Bible study. Now, that I'm assuming was a decision that you made cognitively to go forward and make this specifically Catholic. Correct. Why is that important? It's very important. We use a Catholic Bible and the Catechism of the Catholic Church. Many of us bought the Catechism, stuck it on the shelf, didn't know what to do with it. This enables people to use the Bible and the Catechism to study their faith. It is unashamedly a Catholic Bible study. It, it speaks clearly about what the Catholic Church teaches, about the Eucharist, about the sacraments, about the papacy, about the priesthood. We also have used this, my husband and I, in our home for couples in mixed marriages, in okay. interfaith marriages. Mm -hmm. And I was surprised in inviting people I invited the first woman I invited, I said, would you like to come to a Catholic Bible study, you and your husband? And I thought, I was scared. We drove to the airport, it was a 90 minute drive. I was so chicken. We got up to the terminals and I said, oh Lord, I gotta do this now, I have mm -hmm. 90 seconds left. I said, would you like to come to a Catholic Bible study? She said, oh honey, when, when does it start? We will be there every week. What do you want me to bring? Cookies, brownies, yeah. I'll be there. She was so excited, and I said, did I mention this is Catholic and you need a Catholic Bible and a catechism? We will be there, mm -hmm. she said. And it's been a wonderful and, opportunity. And why do you think that was, you seem surprised by that reaction. I was surprised. Why do you think she reacted that I, way? Because I think she, she saw that she's a very vibrant Christian, and her husband perhaps was um, not very well catechized. And she saw so this as an opportunity. More Catholic, well, they they saw she I think saw this as an opportunity for them to grow closer to the Lord together. I see. Okay. That they would study God's word together. That they would have. They came from two different traditions, and so that might be fruitful. Mm -hmm. And it has been fruitful. It's it's really a wonderful way to invite somebody to come. Anybody, particularly those who are fallen away, the angry, the non-practicing, mm -hmm. the unchurched. There are a lot of people out there who are hesitant to say, come to Mass with me, right. but do you want to study God's Word with me? That's something that well, you could do. Well, it's interesting because it's almost in reverse of what we've seen happen many times in the past where right. you'd have these kind of local Bible studies into denominational, which were mostly Protestant Bible studies, right. and an uncatechized Catholic might go there and over a period of time start to feel like, well, maybe the church really isn't too right on these right, things, exactly. etc. And uh, that's been an experience in the past. And even in the in, in some of the early days of you know post-Vatican II and the charismatic right. renewal, there was there was a very much of an openness where maybe these denominational differences didn't matter that much. We could exactly. all study and work together. To some degree, that's true. To some degree, not always true, right? Exactly, Doug. You know, a lot of people have, uh, somebody comes up and they've memorized three Bible verses and the Catholic thinks, oh my goodness, this person is so wise. We've got a wealth of tradition in the Catholic Church. We have biblical scholars who are so knowledgeable, who are so erudite, and we don't tap into it as right. lay people. So I'm trying to tap into it. And Catholic people, in our, in our Bible study at St. Helens in Vero Beach, I remember one layman came on Tuesday night and after we had done the, the first book, on the Gospel of John, in the sharing sessions, he stood up and he said, I'm a cradle Catholic and I've stayed in the cradle for 50 years. I'm just now <laughs> learning my faith. I don't think I ever heard it said that way. I that's hadn't either, yeah, that's but it was true. You know, he said, now I'm learning my faith. And I think with Catholic radio and Catholic television, there's so much more catechesis. Mm -hmm. People are learning their faith and they want to share it. Mm -hmm. They want to get, and some people, you, you might not be right. able to be a good evangelist, but you can say, come come to my home, right. and we'll have a small Bible study. And what's good about that, that like you said, it's kind of non-threatening that way, exactly. just like Catholic radio is. You can listen to that and not have anybody know that you're doing it. Exactly. People watch EWTN, I'm convinced, and don't tell anybody that they're actually exactly. watching EWTN because they're afraid they might be judged or that somebody right, said, right. well, what are you doing that for? What are you doing that for? When exactly. they find something there and it's feeding that, and that's what this does too. Right. One of the things that struck me too uh, about this too, which you were listing off the names of Bishop Jan Leeson and and uh, I don't know if you mentioned Father Joseph Panessa and Konsanki and Bajernik and Hoek and now I know we have a lot of ethnic groups in the United States but this seems like a real international group of scholars is there a reason why this Bible study that 
is basically home here in the United States would have so many international scholars? How did that come about? I think it's a divine appointment. You know, Father Panessa was our first author. He did the Gospel of John for us, and he's brilliant. He's a wonderful, wonderful scholar. He lives in Montana. And after we had done a few books together, he said, why don't you get uh, Father Jan Meiernik to write on the synoptics because he's lived in the Holy Land for 25 years and he'll give us an archeological type study. And actually, Sharon Doran's gonna do the synoptics this year in Omaha. I think she's got 400 adults or something that are coming together to study mm -hmm. the synoptics. Well, how, would, how, how does that work when you well, say they all she, come together? They come together. Are they going to a conference? Is it, they, how does it work? They come together one night of the week. I believe it's Tuesday nights for Sharon. They meet, I believe, at the Jesuit High School Auditorium, okay, so which it is, is like big enough. She's got a waiting list. They come together, they pray, they um, break into small groups. In this book, there are home study questions, about 20 home and, and study questions. And we're talking about the Gospel, Gospel of Mark. Now, right? are the In formats all of the, of all books, these the, the same? The formats are the same. They're basically the same. There's right? a five or six page commentary written by one of the biblical scholars. There are 20 short home study questions that you use a Catholic Bible and the Catechism to answer. And then you come in a, sh a small group and share them. And this is a very lay-friendly study. There are good Catholic studies that are very involved. Mm -hmm. This is something that a young mom with preschool kids can do or a busy working man can do. You share the answers to your discussion questions with a small group, and then there's a wrap-up lecture. Mm -hmm. um, Sharon is a beautiful lecturer. Not everybody is very skilled, so we provide the videos. Okay. So you can look, so for that example, be, on the Gospel of Mark, you can right. watch Bishop Leeson talk about Mark. So that's about really Mark. what they're designed for. Even right. though we might air them on TV, right. they're really designed to go along, along with, with, this the, book. with the book. Okay. Right. And if you're doing this in your home, you do the small group discussion, you say a prayer, pray to the Holy Spirit, look at the video mm -hmm. and go home. Mm -hmm. the, the other aspect of this is we have a children's book for right. preschool okay. kids that um, moms with preschool children can do, and this is hugely successful. Now is this the first, is there one? Is there this are the three. First one? Okay, The Life of the Jesus. Life of Jesus can go after. with any of the Gospels. It can okay. go with the Gospel of Mark. That's this one right here. Mm -hmm. And each of, of, the, of the children's books has a Bible study story. Mm -hmm. This is on the Annunciation. Then it has a coloring book drawing and a craft the child can make. Okay. This is one of my favorite crafts. It's a little rosary made out of Fruit Loops and Lifesavers. My friend Ellen and my goddaughter Mary Grace So that would be this. like a kind of like a, almost like a vacation Bible school type right. of project. While do, the mothers right. are working on their study, the children are doing a study. Okay, so it's designed in a sense to almost Simultaneously. I see, okay. So, so here are some little, now this is a coloring book page, mm -hmm. and the child can color the page, and then Emmaus Road is such a wonderful publishing house, they made it so it's perforated. Can be pulled out, right? So okay. you pull this out, you give it to grandma to put it on the refrigerator, or mom, or somebody, and the child has a little craft, and he can tell you the story about Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, and going into Egypt, Egypt with right. the very nice little happy donkey, right. and they want to go into Egypt because Herod is chasing them. He's a bad guy. Okay. So we have these little uh, children's crafts that they can make, and the, the moms love this. This is a little Jairus' daughter story. Jesus okay. touches her and says, Talitha Kumi, and she comes back to life. Okay. So, and a little prayer book that the children can make of foam paper so they can't tear it. So would one of the women who were part of the Bible study be doing this, or would one of the facilitators take care of this so the other women can do the Bible study? How does well, it work? Well, any way it works for you. Any way it works, for, works, you. For, you. Way it works okay. for you. We're hoping that some of the older moms like me and the grandmothers would have a heart for the young children. Mm -hmm. You know, in a lot of our parishes, Doug, I'm looking and seeing there is a lot of gray hair, mm -hmm. and we need to reach out to the young families, and this is one way to do it. So the grandmothers could take a, a little children's group, or if you have eight young moms and they meet in a home, two moms could work with the children one week while the other moms That's are it. doing their study, and then the next week somebody else. So well, once the, a month you're working with the children. One of the things you something. mentioned there, I, it strikes home here as well with the idea of really, in a sense, trying to re-evangelize through grandparents. Yes. A lot of grandmas are taking care of the right, kids. Right, exactly while their mom's working or whatever, and that's really a great opportunity for them oh, to, sure. maybe, you know, their children got drifted a little bit in the 60s and the 70s kind of a thing, but the kids are still there and there's still an opportunity. And we've heard many stories, and I'm sure you have them too, of where the kids have helped to re-evangelize their parents. Exactly. Because of what grandma and grandpa have, have exposed exactly. them to, right? And the young moms, we had, when we started this study in New Jersey, we had 
uh, 55 preschool kids show up the first day with 90 women and we thought what are we going to do and the Monsignor said if we're pro-life don't turn any of them away so we arranged a co-op but I can remember the young moms would invite other young moms and some of them had married in the church and drifted and some of them had come back but the the Bible study for the children mm -hmm. the children coming home and telling their parents about Jesus quicken something in the hearts and we had young moms coming back to the mm -hmm. church we had um, dads coming into the church in interfaith marriages so we saw a great fruit of evangelization just from mothers and children studying the word together and when they come back uh, what is your sense there's a lot of outreaches these days of uh, his journey home for converts and is the right. whole catholic coming home out, out wonderful outreach we've worked with uh, when they when they do come and they join and they get involved again what is your sense? Is there a general theme of why they went away in the first place? There are a variety of reasons. People drift away. People hear confusing things. They have bad experiences. Somebody didn't treat them well. Our, our parishes largely are huge. Mm -hmm. But a Bible study allows a small group that somebody knows my name. Somebody knows who I am. Uh, there's, there are 10 people in my small group or eight people who know me, who will pray for me. Um, one of the young moms in our group had a miracle of mm -hmm. a child born with a tumor on her eye. And the young moms prayed for her. Somebody brought Lourdes water. Right. They did surgery in Philadelphia. The doctor said there'll always be a scar. Well, this little child is in the textbook now because she has no scar. Oh, wow. And it's like 20 years later, mm -hmm. 10, 15 years later or something. And so the mothers pray for one another. Mm -hmm. They talk about their weariness. They share their lives, their faith, their individual, mm -hmm. which they can't do in mass. You know, they can't do in the parish, but they could do right. in a small Bible study. Well, let me ask you too, is this a parish-centered Bible study? Let's say it can be done in the parish, it can be done at home. Should you, if you're trying to organize this in your local parish, is this something you should go to your pastor exactly. about first? And it says that right in the introduction of the book. The first thing to do is present this to your pastor. Every single one of our books has the imprimatur of the, the local bishop, so the books are free from any moral Have error. you ever had a situation where you heard where the pastor said, no, I don't want this Bible study in my parish? Yeah, I have. One t it's, it, it's a very... Um, yeah, there are some people right. who have different preferences. They have right. a different idea, and, and that's fine. Mm -hmm. You know, God bless them. Most um, pastors are very pleased to have it, and they're pl very pleased that they don't have to do anything. And would you say that rolling forward, you see that less and less? Yes, I would think, yes. Right. Most, most pastors are very pleased because they see, uh, for example, in our parish at, at St. Helens, we've got probably 60 adults that meet at night. Um, we have two men's groups, and when Monsignor Meyernick came to talk to our group personally, we put it in the newspaper, so we had mm -hmm. lots of uh, non-Catholics coming. And the one thing they noticed was, where'd you get all the men? Right. Oh, Usually Bible right. studies are ladies. Right. Where'd you get all these men? And we have a wonderful uh, group of men who lead the study of businessmen in the area. why do you get men? I think men want to also share their group. We do share their faith with other men. Okay. We have separate men's groups and women's groups in our discussion in the parish. At home, we have men and women together. Mm -hmm. But the men seem to like to share their lives with other men, their struggles, their frustrations, their faith. Do you find uh, any of the particular with all of the different, you've got 12 volumes, right? 11. 11 volumes. We're, we're working, working on, on the twelve. last two. Okay. Right. So Mark is the 11th then? Yes, Mark okay. is the 11th. It, the Gospel of Mark. Have you ever found that women tend to like these particular Bible study books and the men might like these better? Have you seen any I preference think, like that? I think most everybody likes to study the New Testament. Okay. It's, it's more familiar. It's mm -hmm. easier. I think everybody loved studying the wisdom literature of the Bible. Mm -hmm. Bishop Yan made it come alive. Um, some of the Old Testament books are more challenging. Mm -hmm. um, Isaiah, Monsignor Kosanke did a great job on that. Is and that because you need to know more about it, background more, information? And, and okay. I think it's a little more troubling, you know, mm -hmm. the wars, the battles, everybody's, you know, going into slavery and captivity. How does that that's fit not fun. into <laughs> the uh, New Testament God? Right, right, that right. Kinda... So that, that's kind of, but all of our scholars have done a right. great job of pulling it together and showing the the interrelationship between right. the New Testament fulfillment of these Old Testament promises. Well, that's what leads me also to the next question is, if we're having a Bible study, does it matter which one we start off with? Well, uh, in the brochure you have, we have mm -hmm. six 
now seven basic foundational books. Okay, that's and the basic we, foundational right. books. And, that's, okay. and that would be the Gospel of John and Genesis and Moses and the Torah, the Synoptics, the Acts and Letters, Prophets and Apostles, and the Gospel of Mark. Those are basic. You could start with any one of those. We usually start like to start with a Gospel, like mm -hmm. the Gospel of Mark or the Gospel of John, and then go to Genesis, and then come back to the New Testament, and then go back to the Old Testament. So we like to alternate one year in the New Testament, one year in the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. The advanced books are David and the Psalms, Isaiah, the wisdom literature of the Bible, a very interesting and challenging book called Ezekiel Hebrews Revelation that was written by Father Andreas Hock, the mm -hmm. dean of the seminary in Denver. And that's a beautiful book and people are very curious about Revelation. Mm -hmm. And he does some very beautiful wrap-up lectures on videotape that help us to understand clearly what the Catholic Church teaches. I was going to say with a Catholic perspective well, on Catholic Revelation because there's exactly. a lot of things there's about Revelation. There's a lot of things out there. A lot of confusion. A lot of confusion. So he makes it very, very clear, very layperson friendly, very understandable. Well, this is one too, but this, this, at least in the brochures list, is coming soon, The Rise and Fall of Ancient Israel. So those are actually books, a consolidated Cons, view of Consolidated of a lot of books, right. Well, in wisdom literature, the Bible covers all the wisdom books. I see, you okay. Know, Job, Job, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Psalms, Psalms yeah. okay. Song of Songs, Wisdom, and Spirit. So the rise and fall of ancient Israel is Joshua, Judges, a, 1 and 2 Kings, 1st right, and 2nd right. Chronicles, Amos, And Father Isaiah. Panessa is writing that right now. He's okay. working on that right now, and I think he's going to do some uh, videotaped lectures when he's teaching the deacons in Montana okay. at Miles City. Now, what was the first book that was actually done the in the series? The Gospel of John. Okay. Have you gone back at all in any of these and done as you've had experience with them and say, you know, maybe in light of the catechism or in light of the way it seems to flow in the Bible study, let's change the book around or the format around a little bit or anything. Or the, it, the format works well. We haven't, we've, we've revised the Gospel of John three times. That's gone into print several times. The synoptics we've revised se several times. Uh, Bishop Leeson had a, a, an issue with one sentence in the synoptics, so we, we changed one thing around. It was something about language. Mm -hmm. Because all of our writers are polyglots, mm -hmm. they bring such wisdom. Which, for which means which that they speak, they speak multiple so many languages. languages. For, so, okay. for example, when he did the Gospel of Mark and he's talking about Jesus casting out the evil spirit, he says, um, be silent be still. And then when he stills the sea, he says, be still. The bishop said, that's the same word. Mm -hmm. That's the same word in Greek. Mm -hmm. Who knew that? Right. We, you know, a lay person wouldn't necessarily know that. Yeah. Father Mitch Pack would have known He would have known that, <laughs> yes. See, most priests would know He's that. He's a polyglot, <laughs> yes, too. Exactly. Uh, exactly. Well, let me ask you, too. Uh, so, you, how many people do you know have any idea, the number of people that actually have gone through, and how many people actually have gotten through them all? Well, I don't, the, our, our group in, uh, in Florida has done all the books. We have a lady in our, in our study who hasn't missed a single week. She's mm -hmm. in, in the last 10 years. Cecilia's our best small group leader. Nobody will leave her small group of 12 ladies. Mm -hmm. Every year it just expands. But um, I have no idea how many groups are doing it. I know mm -hmm. some, I heard from a, a parish in um, Little Mound, Texas or something and said we're the smallest uh, or Flower Mound, Texas, we're the smallest parish in the most remote area of the diocese. We have nothing. And a year later, I got a, uh, an email from a man saying, could you please spend, send me a Bible study book? I'm in this group in Flower Mound, Texas. So, okay. Uh, now, if somebody out there is watching the show and they want information, is right. that the CatholicBibleStudies.net? Is that your? Yes. That's your website. That's your website. Or they can go to Emmaus Road, and another nice thing is Emmaus Road will help out that's parishes. That's EmmausRoad.org. Yes. Okay. And they'll, you can get a bulk um, discount on a book. If you're doing a group and you have five or more people, you call Emmaus Road, they have an 800 number, and okay. they will discount the books. If you're buying a whole case of books, that's the biggest discount. So mm -hmm. we wanted to make this manageable. So it's, so the children's book, we didn't want it to be more than $10 for a child for mm -hmm. the whole year, 20 mm -hmm. lessons. And for the adults, we wanted to make sure that the, the books, the adult books were under $20. And what's the average size usually of a Bible study that you would recommend? Uh, it, Led it, by it the be, average person, not by one of the major leaders. Not by one of the major leaders. Or by well, you or something. It can, I think we want to start with, it, you can start with a very small group. Mm -hmm. You can start with a dozen people. We've done this Bible study with teenagers in our parish. A teenager came up to one of our, my friends and said, Mrs. D, you know, we go to Bible study on Wednesday night. Real nice lady, she cooks us pizza and everything, then she teaches us about the Bible. It would be really nice if we had something Catholic. Mm -hmm. 
So we thought, oh, oh okay. okay. So we did this with the teenagers, and unlike the adults, we just worked on the questions together. Mm -hmm. We read the Bible together, we read the commentary together, then we split up the guys and the girls. The guys did odd-numbered questions, the girls did even, and then we shared. And just before we so, go, do you, in that experience, do you, did, was there a different perspective that was brought to the scriptures oh, by course. the young people? Of course. But they're hungry for God's Word. Mm -hmm. Young people are hungry for God's Word. Adults are hungry for God's Word. And it really doesn't make that much of a difference if you do this in your home or in your right. parish. The important thing is that we're trying to get close to God and we're trying to bring others to meet Him in the process. Well, that sounds terrific. Keep up the wonderful work. Great to see you again. Thank you, And Jim. best to the bishop when you see him. I, we hope to have him back here, of course. And keep up your good work with the Come and See Catholic Bible Study, Lori Banhart, Ph.D. It's the Come and See Bible Study Series published by Emmaus Road. And we gave you those uh, web addresses for the Bible study as well as for Emmaus Road. Check those out. Check us out next time right here on EWTN's Bookmark.